my name is Paul Miners and welcome to another one of my Asana training videos, my first video of 2020. And in this video I'm going to be giving a bit of an update of how I actually currently use Asana. I've been making videos for a number of years now and people have commented that my account looks a little bit different uh, to what they're seeing. Obviously Asana has changed over the last few years, my own use of Asana has changed. So today I'm going to be giving you a bit of a tour of how I use Asana. Uh, if you want to get some one-on-one -on -one help with Asana after watching this video, there are details in the description below of how you can uh, learn about my consulting services. There's also details of how you can sign up to my newsletter and get uh, alerted about new videos and tips and tricks that I'm sharing as well. And of course, if you do have any questions, please feel free to leave me a comment below as well. So let's get into it. Let me just start by saying as well, this is how I'm currently using Asana. Obviously, I'm running probably a very different business to you or my use of Asana may be very different to you. And that's totally fine. Asana is going to be used differently for different types of people and businesses. So just because this is how I use it doesn't mean this is how you should use it. The purpose of this video is purely to give you an idea of how uh, someone like me, an individual or someone managing a few people, is currently using Asana and maybe it'll give you some ideas. So let me start by explaining my project structure. So I do have an organization, which is PaulMiners.com, which means I can have multiple teams. I actually only have one team, which you can see here, PaulMiners.com. So yeah, running a small operation, I'm really just managing myself, my wife, I have a developer who I often delegate tasks to, and a virtual assistant. So being a small operation, I have just one team with all of my projects in it. So here we can see them on the left. I have a timeline, which I'll come back to in a little bit. But then really most of my work lives in these sort of category projects, like business. Um, so this is sort of general marketing, accounting, any kind of just admin of my business, I will create tasks in here. So you can see actually a lot of these, if you look at the date column here, a lot of these tasks are set to repeat. So things like checking my monthly Google Analytics, filing GST tax returns, these things that I have to do on a weekly, monthly, or even biannual basis, I have a lot of these types of things set to repeat. And so this project is not really a project, it's more of a container for tasks and things that I need to do. And actually, I'll take this opportunity to point out some goal planning that I do in Asana as well. So here's just an example. These aren't real goals. Or some of them are. But um, yeah, how I do goals is I have a 2020 goals set up as a milestone. And then I've got some, some personal and some business goals of things that I want to achieve. So these are really just set up as subtasks. Now what I can actually do is when I'm ready to start working on a goal, uh, is I can take one of these, let's say I'm gonna do this mastermind retreat in Hawaii. If I click into this and come up to my menu, I can actually add this to a project. Where am I going? Um, add to project, there it is. And then I could add this to like my timeline. So I can actually index it into another project where I want to see it when I'm ready to work on it. And I could even set the date. Let's say we're gonna do this. I'll just say we're gonna do it in March. So we'll say maybe there. And so now when I go to that project, which I will show you in a little bit, I can see this goal that I'm working on and actually see that within a different project or in this case on my timeline. So that's a typical project for me. I have other projects like all my clients go into this project. I won't show you that, but I have a project for content planning, things like these videos, blog posts, podcasts that I'm working on as well. So each row here basically corresponds to a blog post or a piece of content that I'm working on. And then I use the subtasks to basically create like a checklist of the things that I need to do for each piece of content. So this is a checklist for creating a blog post, whereas uh, this video that I'm working on has a different checklist as well. And so that's how I'm using the subtasks there. In this project as well, I actually use some custom fields for things like the status of the content, uh, the category that I'm posting to as well. And I use tags, as you can see here, to track the format of that content as well. So just a few ways that I'm tracking um, the different types of content that I'm working on and the status as well. Again, I have another project for kind of sales. So similar to the business project, this is more sales orientated tasks. So for, um, things that I'm working on to do with my products, consulting service, things like that. Those types of tasks just get put into here so I have a nice easy place to organize sales related work. Now I actually made a video, a separate video about this recently, about how I'm using this timeline. So you can definitely go and check that out to give you a bit of a flavor for it now. This timeline is basically my sort of mid to long term view in Asana so I can see what I'm currently working on this week or the next coming weeks or even months for that matter. 
Now, if you watch that video where I explain it in a bit more detail, but these tasks that you're all seeing here actually live inside other projects. So for example, recording this batch of videos is in my business and content project, but I add it to the timeline as a way of seeing how it fits in over the coming weeks and months. So if we look at actually that Hawaii retreat, that's it down there. So this is a task from or a subtask actually from my goals, which I've indexed into the timeline as well. And so you can see it's a very nice visual way of being able to see what do I have coming up over the coming weeks and months. Um, so yeah, uh, really nice. Actually, this is one of my favorite views to now look at in Asana, but definitely go and check out my other video where I explain this in a bit more detail. Now, as you've probably seen me talk about many times before in my videos, I use the My Tasks. This is sort of one of the most important screens in Asana for me. It's where I work on a daily basis to see the tasks that I'm working on today, tomorrow, and really coming up over the next week. So this is my sort of short-term view of what I'm working on. I've got some subsections here for organizing tasks into the morning and afternoon. Uh, upcoming, I sort of organize some stuff that I'm waiting on or thinking about from stuff that I have coming up planned to do over this week and next week as well. So it's really nice to just have a quick list of this is what I have coming up over the next seven days. And you can see these tags here, these numbers, 60, 95, 15. These basically represent how long the task will take. So I have some calls coming up that take 60 minutes. Um, a task here that should take 15 minutes, for example. And so I just use the tags as a visual way of sort of seeing how long the task I think will, will take. But yeah, this is one of the most important screens in my opinion in Asana. So a screen that I probably spend about 90% of my time on when I'm just organizing myself and planning my time, I'm usually on this My Tasks page. Then we have some reports over here. So I've created some custom views for things like tracking my team's workload. So if I show you the search criteria, this is basically showing me any tasks assigned to these people that are incomplete. So it's a really quick little way that I can see just look, what have I assigned to these, to these other people on my team so I can quickly check in with any of these items. I have another report for things that are due tomorrow. Uh, this is really quite simple. It's anything assigned to me that is incomplete due within the next day. And this is actually something I'll look at, at the as part of my end of day routine. I'll look at this to actually, before I go home, plan my tasks for tomorrow, make sure I've got them blocked out on my calendar and just sort of plan my day before I go home so that the next day I come in and I'm kind of ready to go, I know what I'm doing. And then another report here, client calls. I've actually defaulted this to the calendar layout. This is showing me tasks in the client's project that has one of these tags. So it's basically any calls with clients that have, that have booked with me. So it's sort of a nice, just quick calendar that I can look at to see how many calls I have coming up on a given day. And then finally, I have this personal project as well. People often ask me if I use Asana for personal tasks, and the short answer is yes, I do. Basically, anything to do with these sort of categories here, finance, uh, health and fitness, personal development, holidays and things. I've got some important dates down there that I need to remember, um, birthdays and anniversaries and things. So I actually do use this for personal as well. And because I assign these personal tasks to myself, they all show up on my tasks as well. Um, so I can kind of just have one master to-do list, to -do list of my personal stuff and my work stuff all in one place. I don't have to be jumping between different tools. So as I said, please let me know, let me know if you have any questions about this setup. Um, I know that everyone uses Asana a little bit differently. I hope this has maybe given you a few ideas. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.